I can understand English, but I can't speak it fluently. I want to know if you can relate to this. I can understand English, but I can't speak it fluently. I receive so many emails and questions from students, and the vast majority of them, in one way or another, make this same point. Do you feel that you've spent hours, days, years studying English? But suddenly, when you have to speak, you go blank? The words don't come, you forget all of your grammar, you stumble over your pronunciation, and your vocabulary goes down the drain. To go down the drain is an idiom meaning to disappear. WEL, this lesson is for you. I am going to help you break free from your current struggles with spoken English. And I'm going to help equip you with practical skills to strengthen your confidence in speaking English fluently. Now, before I discuss why this happens, because we have to know why before we can work to solve the problem, so, this lesson won't just improve your English skills, we can also work on your listening skills, your pronunciation skills, and your vocabulary. At the end of the video, you can test your understanding. It means you can ask any question on comment. Okay, let's go back to the question. Why do so many students feel they are able to understand English but are unable to speak fluently when the moment arises? Well, this is mostly related to the fact that understanding a language requires the use of receptive skills, listening and reading. Most English learners focus on language input, like watching films, YouTube videos, TV shows all in English. They listen to English-speaking podcasts and read books in English to immerse themselves in the language as much as possible. This is fantastic, lots of us do it, and don't stop doing it. It's a great way to build vocabulary and to gain a better overall understanding of how the language functions. But, and there's always a, but, this doesn't do so much to increase your fluency when speaking because, in contrast, speaking requires the use of productive skills. You need to take a more active role in your studying, and by that, I mean practice. You need to focus more on output using the language rather than just taking it in. We need to have a good balance between the two. But unfortunately, language output can be much harder to find than language input. It's not so free and easy to go to an English-speaking country, find a personal English tutor, or find an English-speaking best friend. This is why I meet so many Grammar Geniuses students whose knowledge of grammar is higher than most native speakers however, they just can't speak. They know all of the theory, but when it comes to the practical, they struggle. Today, I have six practical tips for you. The first one is completely free, and that is, talk to yourself. This is something I actively did when I was learning Spanish. One of the simplest things you can do to increase your output is to talk to yourself, and you can start right now. It could feel a little bit strange, but it's truly magical how well talking to yourself works to improve your fluency and fluidity. Plus, you do it all day long anyway, so why not do it in English? Most of us, not all of us, have a little voice in our head when we think. Some people don't have this, but most of us do. This little voice probably speaks in your native language. See if you can come up with an English alter ego for your inner voice. If you can't find that inner voice, you're going to have to speak out loud, I'm watching TV. I am washing the dishes. I am picking up the plate. I am scrubbing it with a sponge. I hope my husband brings home pizza for dinner. Now, I really recommend speaking out loud because you need to practice creating new sounds and feeling how words are formed in the mouth. But narrating in your head is a great way to start, and it's a good thing to do if lots of people are around you. This slight adjustment can help you significantly increase how much you use English during the day. 
And it's especially useful if you don't have anyone to practice speaking with and you can't afford to hire someone to practice speaking with. Now, I want to make a further addition to this point, and this is a way you can supercharge your vocabulary no joke, I used it myself. This was one of my first videos on YouTube, actually, on how to drastically increase your vocabulary because it works. As you are narrating in your head or out loud everything you do in your day, watch out for when there is a specific word or phrase that you just don't know in English. Keep a vocab diary. I think back in the day, in my first video, like seven years ago, eight years ago, I told people to write it down in an actual notebook. Nowadays, there are apps for that. You can use your notes app. You could program your smartwatch to take in your voice. For example, what if I'm walking down the street and I realize that I don't know the word for traffic light in Italian, the language I'm learning? I would do something like this because I love using my smartphone. First, I would ask Siri to write it in my notes. Hey Siri, write traffic light in my notes. Easy as that. Then I'll ask it to set a reminder at 6 p.m. for me to go through my new vocabulary. Hey Siri, set a reminder at 6 p.m. tonight to translate and review my new vocabulary. Okay. Okay, I've added it. Beautiful. So tonight at 6 p.m., when LIV got home, Illinois get a reminder to go through the new vocabulary I've added today. I haven't had to type a single thing, it's been such low effort, but I know that every day, LL be expanding my vocabulary with the words around me that I'm actively noticing that I do not know in English, or whichever language you're learning. After that, you need to practice using these in sentences out loud. Okay, that's my free, super accessible way of increasing your English output. Now let's move on to tip number two, talk to a tutor. But this one is incredibly important. Why is talking to a tutor better than talking to yourself or talking to another English speaker? Three things, in my opinion. You can say to a tutor how you would like the conversation to go, and you can reenact situations in which you felt you failed in the past. Maybe someone at a networking event asks you what you did for a living, and you stumbled over your words, got flustered, and just gave a really oversimplified version of what you do a version that. Did you know justice? When you hire a one-on-one -on -one tutor, you can run through those exact situations so you never have to struggle like that again. The next two points are really important too, corrections. You want someone who fully understands the English language who can accurately correct you when you make mistakes. That might be your grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, or, more importantly, whether you are speaking clearly and naturally. I don't recommend aiming for absolute perfection. Instead, you want everyone to understand what you're saying. And number three, you're in a safe space with a tutor to request feedback, to make mistakes. You're not going to be ridiculed, you're not going to feel embarrassed. A personal tutor is someone who experiences mistakes with English learners all the time it's literally their job. And because of all of that experience, they can give you targeted advice to make quick improvements. Now, let's think back to our school days. We all had a teacher that we didn't like. We didn't like them, they didn't like us. We didn't get on. I had multiple teachers like that. Some of them absolutely should not have been teaching children when they so obviously hated children. So for many students, the fear of finding the wrong tutor gets in the way of actually finding the right one because, unlike school, this is something that you are personally paying for. You're making an investment, so to spend an hour with a teacher that you end up not liking that's an expensive mistake. Now here's where I think LV got a really good solution for you, in more ways than one-two ways, actually. 
Have you ever heard me mention Languatalk before? This is a company that I liked so much I decided to become a part of it, so technically, I'm sponsoring myself here. I truly think that Languatalk is the best online language tutor platform, and this is how it relates to this lesson. When you first start browsing through the English tutors on the platform, firstly, you can rest assured that they are of incredible quality. Langua Talk has an incredibly strict screening process, well below 10% of applicants get accepted onto the platform. Then, you can filter by their availability, the country they're based in for time zone, the price per hour to make sure it fits with your budget, and also your motivation whether you're learning for your career, because you're moving to a country, or because you want to pass a specific exam. Then, you'll see all of your suitable tutors appear.